Hello, my name is Arnav Shah and I am the team leader for our team VizLock and this is our official entry to the Smart India Hackathon 2022. Our topic is Graphical Password Authentication. So before I uh, show you guys the demo, a brief overview of Graphical Passwords. Um, essentially, it's a way to authenticate a user using a sequence of images or a sequence of pixel in a sequence of images um, and it's meant to replace text-based or alphanumeric passwords or even passwords on your phone such as pin codes or screen locks etc. Now the reason that graphical passwords are so attractive is one because humans can relate with, can identify with and can also recollect uh, over a long period of time images. And so essentially for a human it's much easier to recollect images as compared to uh, text-based passwords over a long period of time. And the second is that the key space for graphical passwords is huge. It's of the order of 10 raised to 13, which is comparable to alphanumeric passwords of length 8 to 10, uh, which is so much more better than your phone uh, passwords such as screen locks or pin codes, etc. Right, so let's dive into the demo. So what I'll do first is I'll register a user and I'll show you how a user selects a sequence of images um, that is then encrypted and stored in the database using a novel algorithm and then uh, the user will then log in uh, and select those same sequence of images and then be authent uh, authenticated, sorry. Right, so I'll just create a new user. So test user, uh, test user at gmail.com. And right, so one feature that we've added here is to select images uh, based on categories. Because as I said, humans identify with images a lot more and that's because they categorize images into the things they actually like. So for example, I like cats. So that's something that's easier for me to remember. So I'll just type in cats and search for the image, right? So the one thing actually that uh, we need to do before anything is essentially determine if you're a bot or not. That's if you're a robot or if you're a human. Uh, now the current techniques where you type in captchas, it's actually breakable. It's actually uh, something that robots can do as well. But this is something that is so much more, uh, so much more tough for robots to do, which is actually draw a number that you're seeing um, that it has to draw. So for example, here I can just draw the number one. I'll click submit and that's it. I've passed uh, the test. So once we've done that, these are a bunch of images for cats. Say for example, I want to select this image. So I'll click on this image and then I have to select a uh, sequence or rather pixels or cells of that image. And this is just an added layer of security. So instead of just selecting an image and encrypting that in the database, we will select an image and a certain a certain sequence of pixels or cells and encrypt the entire thing, that is the image and the pixels and encrypt that and store that in the database. So here, for example, something that I can recollect and remember easily is the years, right? So I can just select these two years as the pixels that I want to select and click submit. Right, now the next image. So essentially you can select how many other images you want to. We've limited it here to four, but you can set that according to your uh, likes and dislikes. So for example, if I'm a fan of cars, right? So if I'm a fan of Ferrari, that's something that I can remember as well. So I'll just search for Ferrari and there's tons of Ferrari right here in front of me. So I can select this one because I like this image more and I'll select the headlights of the Ferrari just because I can recollect that uh, a lot more. Uh, now, one thing that I haven't mentioned is that how we actually encrypt our entire, uh, this entire sequence. And the way it works is, um, the image that I uh, just selected previously, that was a Ferrari and the two headlights, that was the cells, they are used as a key to encrypt the next image. So for example, right here, if I type in chocolate, that's another thing I like, so I'll just type in chocolate. Now, this will give me a series of images and the previous image that I selected, that will be used as a key to encrypt this image, right? So whatever I select here, that will be encrypted using the previous image for Ferrari. And Ferrari, that was encrypted using the previous image that was, I think, cats. So that's how it works. It's a sequential way. Um, and essentially we um, uh, mimic the cipher blockchaining mode. That's something that's used in cybersecurity for uh, ciphers. And so we uh, we use each of the previous uh, blocks are used to encrypt the next block. So you can't just take a block out of place and decrypt it. So for example, here I'll choose this one and I'll select, um, or for example, if I want to select another one, I'll select this one and I'll select the, the, the first two pieces, the first two pixels and I'll click submit. And the final one, for example, I like bicycles. So I'll just click on bicycles here and if, for example, I like to see this one, so this bicycle, and I'll select um, the, the, the rider and just these two pixels here. Now click on submit. 
So right here, we're done. We've selected four images and two pixels per image. And then we just click on confirm registration. Right, now that we've successfully registered, we now want to see if we can actually log in. That is essentially um, try to select the same images that we selected before during registration. So I'll just add the username test user at gmail.com sorry test user and I'll click on login now again the capture comes in just to see if you're a bot or not so I'll please I'll draw for real and right so once that's done uh, as you can see here there are a sequence of random images that I'm shown now these images um, as I said are random so for a hacker he or she will never know which is the correct image that you've selected so I know as a user when I've registered that I'd selected the cat as the first image so I can just click on cat and I also know which pixels I selected so I can select these two pixels and then click on submit so that's the first one now the next one uh, that is uh, what essentially as I said was we use the previous image to decrypt the next image that's what we've done here. We've used the previous image of the cat to decrypt the next image. And as you can see, there are a bunch of random images here and the Ferrari that we selected as part of the second, uh, as part of the second uh, round. Here, as you can see, uh, we also have a hint. Now, these are very useful hints that actually should, uh, that will be sent to the user as part of a JWT token uh, if the user wishes to recollect his or her password, but can't really remember it. So this essentially is just a hint to say that a car that is or a Ferrari that is parked in the garage. Now the way we generate this is by captioning the image that you selected during registration and then removing the keywords. So you can't see as a hacker what um, the image was, but as a user you can still recollect uh, based on uh, your interests what image you selected. So from all these, I know that I selected the Ferrari. So I'll click on the Ferrari and I know I selected the headlights and I'll click on submit. And now the next one, I know with the third round, I selected a chocolate out of all of these. So I'll just click on this and then click on these two. And finally, the last one was a bicycle. So as you can see here, you can see a man riding a bicycle in front of uh, the sky, in front of the wall, something like that. So essentially, these are hints that are very useful that won't actually be shown uh, in plain text like this, but will be only shown to the user if he or she requests it. So here I'll just click the bicycle and select these two pixels that I've submitted. Click on submit and that's it. I mean, I've logged in and that's because I've selected the same sequence of images and pixels that I selected during registration. But now, as I said, we said that uh, it's immune to dictionary attacks, to brute force attacks. Now, how is that possible? So now I will try to log in as a hacker, right? So I know what your email is, testuser at gmail.com. I'll click on login and I'll just the capture again right so now as as a hacker uh, for example I don't know what the first image is right so I will have to select all these images and I will have to select uh, all the sequence of pixels from all these images which is a huge key space but for example if my first image is correct right so for example if the hacker guessed that the first image is the cat and guessed that these two uh, years are the, the ones that he selected right uh, the hacker moves on to the next round now in the next round say for example he doesn't know uh, that your uh, the image that you've selected dur during registration is a ferrari then he selects for example some random image like this and just two random pixels here this and this and tries to go forward now the main kind of novelty in our algorithm is that the next um, the next stage uh, which the hacker is presented with these images they are all random right but uh, previously, when I had selected the correct image, that is the image of the Ferrari, the next time I got a chocolate, which was the correct image that the user had selected. But as a hacker, uh, he will now be led into this uh, all these rounds, but without the correct image. So none of these images were the one that I had selected before. And so the hacker essentially now is lost. It's in limbo. The hacker is in limbo and now he can't really guess the password because he doesn't know if either of these are right or wrong. So any amount of brute force will not help just because these images are always random and uh, you know that you've gone wrong so you can't really even go back and do it again so i'll just click a random image here again submit and as you can see for example my last one the last image that i selected was of a cycle right but none of these are a cycle and that's because the previous round was incorrect so essentially that's how it works and that's how we prevent hackers from logging into our system and i'll just again select a random image here random pixels and as you can see invalid login uh, the hacker was not able to uh, uh, to break our, our, our system. So that's essentially how graphical passwords work. Um, thank you so much.
and yeah until next time